In times of challenge and change, there are key questions many share. How can we prosper and grow? Do we search for meaning or grasp for survival? Something within you knows that there are answers to those profound questions. I want to evolve. I want to express myself better. I Join world-renowned author, teacher, and philosopher Michael Bernard Beckwith as we explore and celebrate all of our human potential. The answer is you, is next. And I'm so glad that you're here with us this evening. Individuals are walking the planet now and they're asking, how can I stay expanded in a world that seems to be contracting? How can I evolve when everything seems to be dissolving right in front of me? How can I become more myself when the world seems to be crumbling right in front of me? And many of you here today probably have some of those same questions. How can I make it through the night? How can I have what I need? How can I grow more in prosperity? How can I achieve a level of well-being and health and harmony and wholeness in my life when it seems as though everything is topsy-turvy? And something within you knows that there are answers to those basic but yet profound questions. Something within you knows that within you is the answer. Something within you knows that if you keep on asking the right question, if you keep on digging, if you keep on searching, you'll eventually bump into the answer and ultimately you will discover it that it's with you all of the time. Ultimately, you'll begin to discover who you are. In this moment, you can think independent of any circumstances going on in your life. Right this moment, as you're sitting here listening to me, there may be some issue that you're seeking to solve. There may be some problem you're trying to overcome. There may be some sense of discomfort that you're trying to free yourself from. And as you're sitting here listening to me right now, you're thinking independent of that experience. And that means you are exercising the faculty that you have with the universal presence to think independent of uh, any issue that's going on and enter into a co-creative relationship with this presence and ultimately change your life. Ultimately change your life. So in substance, what I'm saying, that you're not the body, you have a body. You're not the mind, you have a mind. That you are an avenue of awareness that is conscious of the body. You're an avenue of awareness that's conscious of the mind. And as you begin to expand your awareness as to who and what you really are, you get to make choices that liberate you from limitation, liberate you from disease, liberate you from discomfort, liberate you from poverty and lack and limitation. Choice is actually a function of ever-expanding awareness. And as you begin to have certain practices in your life, certain heart sets and mind sets, you will begin to make the great discovery that all of the power and presence and love, prosperity, abundance, joy, spontaneous goodness, happiness, all of the things that seem so fleeting, that seem to be outside of yourself, just outside of your grasp, You'll begin to discover that they are deep within you waiting to escape. That you're not here to get them, that you are here to let them. You're not here to get it, you're here to let it flow by making high choices from an expanded awareness as to who and what you really are. You want to think about that for a moment. Because what I have just told you, in short, is that you no longer need to be a victim to circumstance. You no longer need to be a victim to the past. You no longer have to be a victim to a future in which you are projecting negativity. You no longer have to be a victim to anything that anyone has ever said about you. You no longer have to be a victim to the things that you've said about yourself. You no longer have to be a victim to anything that through your expanded awareness of this dynamic and magnificent presence, through the expanded awareness, you get to make a choice. You get to make a choice to become more yourself and anchor on earth in time and space the eternal qualities of love and of beauty and of well-being. What I'm saying to you, you're, you're not the constellation of changing personalities that are forged into being based on circumstances in your life. 
You're not the mind, and I'll, you can check this out for me if you don't believe me. You're walking down the street, minding your own business, and then suddenly you hear your mind talking without you. It's having a full-on conversation. And you can just stop and listen for a while. And it has an opinion. It has a point of view, a perspective. It has all manner of things going on, and you're not even participating. Who and what is watching the mind? That's an indication that you're not the mind, that the mind is a set of programs that have been inherited from the world, from your biology, from your parents, uh, uh, from uh, circumstances and situations. But who you are is a unique emanation of something so wonderful and so magnificent that by means of you wants to come into expression, wants to reveal itself. And these transcendent yet imminent qualities uh, that we call love and that we call beauty and that we call harmonizing prosperity and that we call abundance and that we call living intelligence, by means of you, they want to express themselves. The whispering in your ear saying, let me be free. Set me free today. Allow me to come forward and express myself. And you are here to in some way make a choice to say yes, to make a deeper commitment to a great discovery that is within you, that you may go on and live the life of your dreams, that you may live the life of a high intention, of a great vision, great possibilities. You may live a life not as a bystander, but live a life as an individual that's becoming aware that you are the way that the universe is becoming conscious of itself and that all of the power that's birthing galaxies at millions of miles a minute, all of that power is within you right now, waiting for you to call into expression a life worth living. So that when it comes time for you to leave the domain of the body temple, that you can look back and say that your time on planet Earth made a difference in the society in which you live. At the time on planet Earth made a difference in your neighborhood, made a difference in your nation, made a difference in your family, made a difference. We're talking something has been planted in you by the universal presence itself. And that something is inviolate. It's, it's never been hurt. It's something uh, that uh, is always waiting uh, for the right condition uh, that it may leap into expression. And this is very, very important. Because when the proper conditions are met, the potential of anything can rise and express itself. What do I mean by that? You take a little seed... And in this seed, there is a template. There is an idea called the rose bush. This particular seed can be tossed about on the winds for a long period of time. And then a number of years later, finally found itself into the fertile soil. When it hit that soil and it began to rain and the dirt was proper, there was proper nutrition and all the things necessary, proper sunlight, and that seed began to grow into a magnificent rose bush. The idea being that within that seed was a perfect pattern already placed there, not in the future, not in the past, but in the nowness of that moment, in that instant, there's a perfect pattern already there. And when the condition was met, that seed became its full potential. What I'm saying to you is that there's something within you. There are seeds within you. There are ideas within you. There's vision within you. And when the condition is met, it doesn't matter who your parents were. It doesn't matter who your parents weren't. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you came from. It doesn't matter what the economic system is doing. It doesn't matter if they left you, if they lied to you, if they gossiped about you. It doesn't matter about anything that's going on outside of you. As you begin to think independent of that circumstance and create the necessary condition within your own soul, within your own awareness, within your own mind, your potential will rise up and express itself and you will become more yourself. So all of these qualities are within you now. Ricky Bibi, give them a little taste. I am, I am more than I have and I am more than I will be. I am all that I am. 
the land of I am, in the land of the eternal presence, in the land of our withinness, in the land of our interiority, in the land of our expanded awareness of who and what we are, all of our gifts, all of our dreams are within us. You can say to yourself as you're observing the mind from time to time, I am no longer subject to what my mind believes. I'm no longer subject to the rumors of my mind. I'm no longer subject to, to the superstition that my mind has. And you can begin to free yourself from that programming and allow the gift that is within you to not only set you free, but it sets itself free and pulls you along with it. There are mindsets and there are heart sets for you to hold, for you to practice, for you to drill down into. And you will discover that if you do, and you begin to create the condition these gifts will emerge. When that seed blossoms into the rose bush, it does not seek out any kind of therapy saying, why was I in that pocket for so long? Why did the wind toss me for so long? Who did this to me? Why, why, why me? The moment the condition was met, in that instant, the seed began to grow. The moment the condition is met, the high potential within you will rise. The gifts of divinity that need to be stirred into activity. Those goals within you, those dreams within you. The fabric of uh, the universal presence that has forged itself into such uniqueness as each and every individual here. Unrepeatable nominas are you all. What does that mean? A phenomena is something that comes and goes. It's transitory. But a nomina is an idea held in the mind of the universal one that is forever. You are a unique configuration of the all that is waiting to come forth and express itself. And you are going to create the condition within yourself with a few guidelines uh, that you're going to begin to practice so that you're no longer thinking that your good is outside of yourself. You're no longer thinking that it's in the future. You're no longer thinking that someone else has it. You're no longer thinking that if everything outside would just come together, I would be happy. No, you're going to expand during a time of contraction. You're going to have peace during a time of turmoil. You're going to evolve during a time of dissolution. You're going to allow yourself to glow and to grow and become more and never less than your true self. It was Ralph Waldo Emerson that coined the phrase endogenous as opposed to indigenous. Something is indigenous, that means that it flourishes in a particular environment. A palm tree is indigenous uh, uh, to Hawaii, California. You put it in Antarctica, you put it in the snow, the palm tree is not going to do too good there. It's indigenous to a much warmer climate. But you are endogenous. And that means you create your environment from within yourself. So it doesn't matter where you are. So in this instant, you're being uh, soulfully reminded that everything that you could want, hope for, and desire is within you. You are being reminded that there are gifts of divinity that are within you. You are being reminded that there are ideas planted within your own heart. You're being reminded that there's so much power within you and you're no longer be going to become victimized by errant thought patterns that would have you thinking that there's something out there that determines your destiny, whether it be biological imperatives or the society in which you live. No, as an endogenous spiritual being, you are going to determine your own destiny. In other words, a fate is what life brings you. Destiny is what you do with it. And you get to determine that as an endogenous nomina held in the universal presence that is within you. You get to determine this in this moment. You get to create the proper condition for the rising up and the ultimate expression of the good that is within you as you become willing to reflect and reveal a cosmic order. Harmony, peace, love, wisdom, joy, well-being, all of these qualities are within you now. Do I have your ear? Yes. Gonna make a change for once in my life. 
It's gonna feel real good Gonna make a difference Gonna make it right As I turn up the collar on My favorite winter coat This wind is blowing my mind mm -hmm. See the kids in the street Not enough to wait Who am I to be blind Pretending not to see them be I saw us disregard a broken bottle top and a one man soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, cause they got no place to go. That's why I want you to know I'm starting with. There's a movement of energy within you. There is something within you, a gift that needs to be shared, something that needs to express through you, and that negativity, that impossibility thinking comes up through your own awareness or moves through someone else saying, you know, you can't do that, it's impossible, it's never been done before, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too this, you don't have enough education, you have too much education, and you begin to just allow that to weigh you down, and you end up doing nothing, creating the condition for apathy, lethargy, creating condition for you to be in the box of individuals who are not sharing their gifts, not living who and what they are to be on this planet at this time in human history. The first thing you want to do in creating the condition for the growth, development, and unfoldment of your soul is stop listening to the opinions of others. Stop listening to negativity. Stop listening to what might go wrong. Stop listening to what you might have to lose if you go for your dream. Stop listening to what you have to give up in order to be who and what you really are. When that something bigger than circumstance wants to express itself, you do your best to not listen to negativity. And then along the way, as you begin to take your step, as you begin to move in the direction of your vision, you begin to move in the direction of your high-minded goals, you begin to move in the direction of that evolutionary impulse that governs the entire universe that by means of you wants to express itself, you may encounter delays along the way. And every delay is not a denial. It simply means that you're getting something that you're going to need to go forward. This is what the delays mean. Why is that? The universe is friendly and is for you. Life is for you. Life is progressive. It wants to express through you. Everything is working for your good. So when there is a delay, you perhaps have to ask yourself, what is it that's trying to emerge right now in my life? You may have to ask yourself, what is it that I need to become in order to move forward? What gift do I need to activate? You might need to ask, what potential is within me that is seeking to express itself and it will begin to talk to you? So your delay is not a denial. It means that you're getting something along the way that you're going to need in the course of the unfoldment of your soul and the delivery of your gifts. The bane of the human experience is that we complain and bemoan about what we do not have. 
when we're sitting on so much uh, beauty, we're sitting on so much capacity to share and give, and we want to wake up every single day in gratitude for everything that we already have. And we want to begin to use what we have. Oftentimes, people are running around trying to get something more in their life, and they're not utilizing what they have. They're not praising what they have. They're not in gratitude for what they have. They're constantly complaining about what they don't have. And so this universal law matches that vibration and says, you don't have it, you'll never have it, because that is what's coming out of your mouth on a regular basis. Says you want to use what you have begin to take an inventory in your life of every good and perfect thing that you already have every gift uh, every capacity within you begin to look and see what you have and begin to develop an awareness of what you have and then you walk in this world in this conscious state of being about what you have and then the universe matches that awareness of what you have and more is given to you this is the law this is the law these are the conditions how often does complaining, which Bob Marley called prayers to the devil, how often uh, does complaining and bemoaning your fate uh, come out of your mouth? A lot of you, you may have placeholders in negativity. What do I mean by that? You have something you're concerned about, something you're worried about, and, and, and it has you tied up in knots. And then you come to an event like this, or you watch a program like this, or something inspires you. And for a moment, you're out of time and space. You're available to insight and revelation. You're available to wisdom and guidance. And then your mind starts to say, what, what, what was I worried about now? And you go on a hunt for it. You have like a placeholder in negativity. And you just, well, what was I... What was I worried? Oh, there it is. That's what I'm worried about. Oh, yeah. I feel good now because I can worry again. You see? And so many of you have developed the practice of having a placeholder in negativity. I'm inviting you to have a placeholder in affirmation, a placeholder with your aha moments, a placeholder with your expanded awareness so that when things start to get you down, you come back and you remember, oh, that insight, that revelation, that guidance. I remember what that feels like. And you begin to walk in that awareness, talk from that awareness, Having that, having a consciousness, that having awareness so that there is a vibrational match from the universal flow that corresponds to the nature of your song and that is now affirmative, life-giving, life-enhancing, in vibrational match with all of the power and presence and love that there is. Are you following what I'm saying there? Ricky Beebe, give him a little something right there. Sun is rising on me today. Sun is rising on me today. Sun is rising on me today. Let's feel better in every way. Because the sun is rising on me. And that proverbial sunshine is always shining on us. And it's always seeking to rise up and through us. That is the nature of reality, that we are luminous beings with the capacity, by thinking independent of circumstances and co-creating with this universal flow, this universal presence, we begin to engage this sun that is always shining, always expressing, the love that's always shining. We begin, as we're talking now, to become the right condition 
for the emergence of the possibilities that are within us, creating these mindsets and heart sets that I've just spoke about that brings your destiny back into your own hands so that what fate has brought you, what has been doled out as circumstances and situations do not determine your destiny. You are participating in your own unfolding destiny. And so we've, we've come to an awareness here and we want to keep on going a little deeper. And it may mean that you might have to change your diet. You might have to come into the worry-free diet. <laughs> and the worry-free diet is extremely important. In other words, as those who have been holding their place in negativity and holding their place in worry, you can sit there and worry as long as you want. And I'm really worried about this. And I'm really concerned about this. And you'll notice the next day, nothing has changed. The next day, nothing has changed. I'm going to worry some more. And the next day, nothing has changed. You've begun to discover that worrying has no transformational value. Worry is, uh, is, is rehearsing, emotionally rehearsing the very things you don't want to happen. You're actually rehearsing it in your mind. And what you're saying, I hope this doesn't happen. I hope this doesn't happen. I hope this doesn't take place. I hope they don't do that. Oh my God, please don't let this happen. And you're beginning to feel the pains of worry. Even if what you worry about doesn't happen in the physical, your body doesn't know the difference. It starts to spin out toxic chemicals. It starts to block your creativity. It starts to prematurely age you. All because you're standing in the vibration in the field of worry. So we want you to go on a worry-free diet. And the diet goes like this. First of all, you must have your matzo ball soup every day. <laughs> I didn't say matzo ball. I said matzo ball. What do I mean by that? Whenever you hear negativity... You say, not so. Somebody's saying, you know, there's just not enough jobs out there. Not so. Somebody is saying, there's not enough good men out there. Not so. Somebody is saying, not enough good women. Not so. Somebody is saying, there's not enough opportunities for, for the good that wants to express in my life. Not so. Every single day, you begin to start your day with a little not so ball soup. <laughs> and then you want to add a little Cheerios. It goes like this. Someone's coming up to you, and, and you, you got to really watch human beings. Human beings are interesting. You ever watch human beings? They're interesting. And they will come up to you from time to time, and they'll start gossiping about things. And they'll start telling you the worst-case scenarios about stuff. You ever know human beings like that? It's hard outside. Life is hard until you die. Oh? There's nothing good ever happens in this world. Oh? There's not enough good opportunities anywhere. Oh? Oh, oh, gotta go. <laughs> You're not being rude. You're zeroing out the negativity that's coming at you. And then you gotta dive deep into your grateful fruit. I'm talking about grateful fruit. And that is every single day of your life, you develop the mindset and the heart set of waking up and going on a hunt to look what you can be grateful for. You go on a hunt to look what you can be thankful for and how you can live in appreciation. You begin to live this gratitude to such a level that you begin to discover that there's more and more and more and more things to be grateful for until your mind becomes an avenue of awareness of gratitude. It becomes your new heart set. It becomes your new point of reference. And because of that gratitude and thanksgiving, uh, more and more and more can begin to flow into your life. There's a couple of stages of gratitude. There's the one stage in which you become grateful for everything that you have. It's a beautiful thing. And then stage two, you become grateful for the negativity that's in your life. Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> Bad things happen, you say, thank you. I'm so glad that this is taking place. Why? Because you live in a progressive universe. In other words, every time the earth rolls around on its axis, 
and rolls around the sun and the sun rolls on its axis and goes through its solar system and the solar system goes through the galaxy and the galaxy goes through the cosmos as each of those heavenly bodies circles around there is progress in the universe the vibration is elevated and if you are the very same person 365 days later from this day you haven't stayed the same you've actually gone backwards because everything else has progressed so when something negative happens and you begin to be grateful for it, you begin to mine the gifts and the blessings from it because it is coming into your life to help you grow, develop and unfold, develop strength and capacities and, and activate potential within you that otherwise could not happen. How many times, if you look back on your life, something that you were going through, and you just wanted it to be over. You didn't want it to be happening. You went into wishful thinking. I wish this wasn't happening. I wish I wasn't where I was. I wish I wasn't who I was. And, and ultimately, when you look back, you realize that you are who you are today because of that particular experience. That that gift and that talent emerged because of the seeming negativity. Now, if you become grateful and thankful in the midst of seeming negativity, you join forces with the progressive universe. You learn your lessons faster. You harvest your blessings at an ever-increasing level. And you spin into a greater awareness as to the infinite possibilities within you. There's gratitude for all the good that you have. There's gratitude for the seeming bad that's taking place. And then you break into another level of gratitude, and that is gratitude for simply being alive, unattached to anything. Now, this gratitude is very important because this is the gratitude that aligns you with all of nature. Right now, all of nature is giving thanks and is grateful for existing, period. In other words, it's not saying, I'm so glad that I exist and I, and I got to have a car. I'm so glad that I exist, I'm going to be even more happy when I get, and you fill in the blank. All of nature is in pure gratitude for simply existing and being able to participate in the realm of the divine, the unfolding good that is everywhere. When you begin to eat of the fruit of gratitude... You will go through the stage of learning to be grateful for everything that you have. Then you'll go through the stage of learning to be grateful for even the seeming bad in your life. And then you'll break into the awareness of just being grateful, period. And as you stand in that awareness of being grateful, period, there becomes an opening within you that allows for the wisdom, the guidance, the direction that, that can come through you now because the static of worry and doubt and fear has been diminished and now you can hear the guidance of your soul, the intuition, the wisdom that is there beckoning you to become more and never less than your true self. The static is wiped off the line through the eating of the fruit of gratitude. And so you got your not ball soup. <laughs> what, what was the next one? Cheerios. You got your Cheerios. What was the next one? Grateful. You got your grateful fruit. And then you drill into your no TV dinner. This is very important. Unless you're watching public broadcast, <laughs> you're going to have to take some heavy digestive enzymes in order to watch regular television. So you're going to have to take your no TV dinner and instead begin to tell a vision on a regular basis. This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to begin to associate with like-minded individuals instead of bemoaning your fate and uh, inviting people over to a pity party. You're going to invite people over to a vision party in which you're going to sit down and begin to ask questions such as, what's trying to emerge in my life? What good is present that I presently cannot see? What gift is trying to happen in my life right now? What power is trying to emerge right now? What have I been sitting on that wants to come forward? You begin to tell a vision to the individuals around you and you begin to share these visions rather than negativity and you will create a vibration of a proper condition that 
that will allow for the vision that was within all of us to emerge in such a way that people will not recognize you year to year because you have broken from the paradigm of the world in which you are living, which is trying to turn you into a consumer rather than a creator. You will break free from that with your no TV dinner, but telling a vision on a regular basis. And then you finish your dinner with a little receptivity. You sip on some receptivity. It's so sweet. It's so wonderful. It brings to your awareness the idea that everything you can want and hope for and desire is already here. It's pulsating everywhere. And you are here to be receptive to it, to open yourself up to it, to make yourself available to it, to say yes to it. So that you're living your life in a sacred yes to life, yes to beauty, yes to joy, yes to love, yes to abundance, yes to prosperity, yes to compassion, yes to service. And you begin to be receptive because this life, this beauty, this joy that is everywhere that by means of you wants to express itself, it has a little difficulty if in fact there's no receptivity. So you have to be receptive. I'm available. I am not here to get. I am here to let something happen. The no worry diet becomes your way of living. Someone's in need of a prayer today have you done your part someone's in despair this day have you prayed from me your heart so many are trying to find their way and they Then as we begin to practice the no worry diet, as we begin to practice deep and profound opening ourselves up to grander vision, as we begin to open ourselves up 
to using what we have. We begin to open our, ourselves up to understanding that every delay is not a denial. It's just something seeking to grow in us. So we begin to open ourselves up with speaking the word with authority. We begin to open ourselves up on a regular basis. We become oriented differently. It becomes an expanded awareness happens. And now we've gone from orientation to disorientation to reorientation. And in that period from uh, orientation, disorientation, it doesn't necessarily feel good all the time. It's kind of confusing. It's kind of, oh, what's going on? Now, before I started all these spiritual practices, I was kind of happy. At least I pretended I was. <laughs> I could fake it. I could go to happy hour and pretend I was happy. But now I don't know what's going on. I feel confused. Uh, it's dark. Something's, something's not working. But it's in that state of dissolution that there's an evolution taking place. The emergence of the gifts within you are coming forward because you're creating the right condition. And in that state, there is a reorientation. And then <sighs> change takes place. You begin to see yourself as you really are. Nothing wrong with you. Nothing missing. Everything working together for your good. You begin to feel this in a way that you've never felt it before. And you begin to understand that the good that you're seeking is the good that you're seeking to give, not get. You begin to see that everything you want, hope for, and desire is within you and that you are here to set it free. You're here to release it. You're here to allow it. You're here to, to let it, not get it. How do we have these mindsets and these heart sets that I've just talked about? And it comes down to asking empowering questions. The universe responds to the questions that you ask. And oftentimes individuals ask disempowering questions. They will ask, why me, oh Lord? Why me? Who's to blame? What's wrong? So we have to ask some empowering questions. And here's why. Every problem that you have in life is a question that's trying to ask itself. And every question is an answer trying to reveal itself. And every answer is an action trying to express itself. And every action is a way of life trying to be born. Let me break that down for you again. A problem in your life stands for emblem. It really means emblem. It's emblematic of a set of beliefs perceptions and points of view that we're holding on to. So it out pictures as a problem. It's really an emblem of issues within our own awareness, conditions that are preventing the expression of our good. It's inviting us to ask a question. For every problem, there's a question trying to be asked. For every answer, there's an action trying to be expressed. And for every action, there is a way of life trying to be born. So the universe is inviting you to ask a question. Matter of fact, it's daring you to ask a question, to ask a proper question, because if you do, your life will change. And the comfort zones that you are living in and the coping mechanisms that you have become used to, they will shatter. They will fall apart. It will be a little uncomfortable. Some people have become used to, to lack and limitation. They're used to, to, to dis-ease and disharmony. They're used to it. And they develop a whole way of life uh, to maintain that particular way of being. But if you begin to ask the right question, the answers will come. The actions will come. The way of life will be born. And you will not know yourself anymore. You won't be able to remember who that person was. And in that space, you begin to understand the law that you only get to keep what you give away. And that as you are allowing the love, the peace, the joy, the wisdom, and the harmony to ex express through you, as you allow your vision state to speak itself into expression, the world rolls up at your feet and becomes whatever is necessary for the next step of your evolution. And you will grow from lack and limitation to abundance and health and prosperity. And you'll begin to discover that all of it is right here and right now. It is not in the past. It is not in the future. Ricky Beebe and I were in New York City. We were at the United Nations. And I had the opportunity to speak at a special forum there. And after the speaking, we had to catch a plane. 
because we had an, an engagement the next day. And so we, as we were coming out of the United Nations and we were getting into this van to take us to the airport, I became aware that I had left my mobile phone inside the assembly hall. And I said, Ricky, <laughs> I got to go back. And she says, no, we might miss our plane. I said, no, I, got, I need my phone. I got all the information. I got all my phone numbers. I need it. And she said, okay. So I go through security, and I'm running down the hallway, and when the security guards see me, I walk. Really cool. And then I get to the assembly hall, and I open the door, and there's another assembly already in there. And so I walk in like I belong there. Just kind of nod at people. Hey, how you doing? And there's a woman up there speaking. And I know my phone is right behind her. I got to catch a plane. And then she says something profound and everybody's clapping. And in that break of energy, I go up on stage, I get the phone and I go out and I run down the hallway again. I stop when I see security. I get into the van and we say, okay, on to JFK airport. We get about a mile away from JFK and I look at the itinerary. We're supposed to be at LaGuardia airport. Oh no. We're supposed to be at LaGuardia Airport. We have to turn around. And the driver says, you said JFK. I said, I know, but we got to turn around. We might be able to make this flight. So he turns around. He's driving under the speed limit. I said, you're going too slow. That's the present. He said, you said JFK. That's the past. And we said, we got to get to LaGuardia. That's the future. So we kept bouncing back and forth between the past, the present, and the future. You're going too slow. That's the present. You said JFK. That's the past. We got to get to LaGuardia. That's the future. So we kept going back and forth, past, present, future, past, present, future. And then every now and then, Ricky and I would stop and take a deep breath. All is well. <laughs> we step into the now. No issues. Everything is fine. We're in the nowness of this moment. So we got out of the car. <laughs> In the nowness of this moment, everything good. We go up to the counter with our bags, and the guy says to us, you're at the wrong terminal. <laughs> we said, what are you talking about? It says United Air. He says, yes, but operated by US Airlines. That's another terminal. We said, can we walk to it? He said, no, you got to take a cab. We get in the cab, get to the next terminal. We check in, we go through security, we get to the gate, and the flight was postponed an hour. So we walked around and we shook everybody's hand, apologizing for stopping time. <laughs> We're so sorry we did this. <laughs> but, but here's the issue, here's the point. There are people who live in the past. Immature pride or shame. Or people who live in the future. Fear or ambition. You see, ambition, ambi, like a person that's ambidextrous. They're moving in two directions at the same time. They're moving in the direction of their dream, but they're afraid they're not going to get there. Ambitious. And the present. Present is the field of your imagination. And you can have embarrassment or you can have vanity. You can have a lot of things. But it can be an opening into the now. The now is totally different than the present. The present is your imagination. But the now is no time no space, all here now. All of the qualities, all of the gifts are right here and right now. And then you discover that everything is working together for your good. Now here's the caveat in this. Here's a little small print. That right now you've been oriented by the society in which you live and uh, somewhere along the line you might even think that uh, you are a consumer of some kind. And as I sometimes saying, I just imagine uh, that word and let it amplify itself in your mind and you will begin to see that a consumer is, uh, you know, mm, I'm a consumer. I have come to this planet to consume and to get and to become big. Uh, you are not a consumer. You are a creator. You are here to co-create with the fundamental harmony of the universe and allow it to flow through you like never before. Three questions you want to ask yourself on a regular basis. You want to ask, how can I grow? What can I give? And what can I celebrate? 
Those are three questions you want to live with. Because you are an evolving, unique being, you want to ask every day, how can I grow? So at the end of that day, you're not the same person that got out of bed. You've had an insight. You've had a revelation. You've practiced something new. You've tried something new so that you have become more yourself. How can I grow today? I don't want to be the same person 365 days from today. I want to evolve. I want to become more myself. I want to express myself better. How can I give? You ask that question, the universe fills your hands with more than you can handle. And it keeps on filling it because you have asked, how can I be a giver? How can I share? As I said earlier, all of nature is in celebration for simply being, simply being in existence. It's celebrating constantly. Human beings have a tendency to postpone their celebrations. They wait for an anniversary. They wait for a birthday. They wait for a raise. They wait for something. And then now it's time to celebrate. When you begin to ask that question, what can I celebrate? You're lifting your octave. And what happens is you keep bringing into your life experience. You keep creating. You keep manifesting more and more and more things to celebrate. How can I grow? How can I give? And what can I celebrate? These are heart sets and mindsets for you to discover that the answer is you to the question of more prosperity, more health, right relationships, abundance, expansion during times of contraction. The answer is you, not outside of you. The answer is you, not someone else. The answer is you. Today is the beginning of a new life. Say yes to it. Again. There's a new territory that I never saw before. Like a fire of transformation breaking through my core. Shining in the darkness, I can see the light of day, and this new territory is my strength, it is my way. Say this new territory is my strength, and so I pray, well I pray. 